love. Jen would like to welcome you to the world of awakening, empowerment, and significance, and to experience the genuine empowerment that springs from the choice to believe in your intrinsic worth. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, Jen loves big hugs, long walks, and all the dogs. She's a speaker, author, and also runs a, a networking group for women. Jen's third book, Wake Up to Your Significance, will be out soon. Her next big event is in two and a half weeks, and she'd love to share info with you afterwards in the, uh, the garden room. Jen loves being here and is grateful to share with you today. So please help me welcome Jen Grant. Thank you, Jen. Good morning, and thank you, Don. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am excited to be here and share with you today. I recently read an article, maybe you saw this article, it was in the Star Tribune this past week, and it talked about Minneapolis being, wait for it, one of the loneliest cities in America. Did anyone see this article? A few of you, okay. So we have a few of you that saw this article. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first read that, I thought, didn't I recently also read an article that Minneapolis is known as one of the happiest cities in America as well? We had that article not that long ago, so the, the dichotomy was not lost on me immediately. Now I bring up that article because our theme for today, our theme for this month is, uh, out the door it went, solitude. <laughs> It's all about solitude. So spending, ah, that's it. Spending time in solitude is our theme for the month. And why I bring up that article is because I want us to be really mindful of the languaging that you're, we're using. And Don actually, thank you, it was a perfect entree into what I want to talk about. He talked about uh, a little bit about our language and, and how we're leaning into possibility and how we're leaning into future. So. Part of our time this morning is gonna be talking a little bit about the languaging, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the spectrum of aloneness, loneliness, and uh, being in solitude, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of solitude. And if we have time, I'm gonna welcome your questions because what we know for sure is that anything we share and talk about, this is my perspective, right? This is me standing up here having an opportunity to share for you, but it really hits home for you when you get an opportunity to engage, when you get an opportunity to land in it in a way that's meaningful for you. So I would love to see if we can give you uh, that chance as well before we wrap up our time together. So back to that article. Now, what's interesting about this, if you read that, you know that that article was based on one metric and one metric alone, as it's stated in the article. That metric is how many people are living alone. 44% of Minneapolis residents are living alone. They took that stat from the Chamber of Commerce, and that's the metric that then led to, we are one of the, quote, loneliest cities in America, because 44% of us live alone. Why I think that's so important to understand is if I were to use the word lonely to you and the word alone, they do not synonym synonymously mean the same thing, right? I can be alone and also not lonely. Would you agree? We can be alone and not lonely. We can also be lonely and not alone. Have you ever had this? Where you're among people and yet you still have loneliness within you. So I think it's really interesting and we need to be really mindful of those words. Another way that I want you to think about this is if I talk to you about solitude, solitude to me, if I say you get to go be in solitude this afternoon, that has a very different feeling than if I were to say, you have to go spend today in isolation, right? Different energy, different feeling. So I want us to really notice the language that we're using and what we're speaking life into. If I, I don't know about you, but I love solitude. Solitude makes me very, 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 very happy. Solitude gives me life, it gives me the opportunity and the possibility to come back into myself. 
And I think it does that for all of us, but we've been maybe misunderstanding what it can look like. Maybe not really um, owning the possibility of how we can make it our own and what that looks like. And coming off of the last few years, isolation was a big deal for many of us. We were really mindful of being isolated and being away and being pulled away. And I think that also plays a role into what our solitude looks like. Don mentioned that I run a women's networking group, which is really exciting. And what I have found as I've taken this over is that as we come together, and it's not just, it's not just women, we do have some great men that join us as well. What I have found as we get into this space, it almost feels like pulling teeth a little bit to get you out of your home and into the physical space. But once you're there, you take this breath and exhale and go, oh, I needed this. I didn't realize how much I needed this because I think we've been so isolated. Now on the flip side, if we've spent time in solitude, to me, solitude is nurturing, it's nourishing, it's life-giving, it gives us the chance to re-engage, come back stronger, process everything that has happened, and then go forward. So for example, in 2021, my mom passed away in June. Three months and three day days later, my stepdad passed away. And then about a week after he passed, my dad, called me on the phone and he said, I know you've been through a lot, but, and my dad had to have quadruple bypass surgery two months later, and I was his sole caregiver for the next eight weeks. So to say 21 was full would be accurate. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I go into those times, I love the opportunity of caregiving. It's a really special opportunity. And those last two weeks with my mama, some of my favorite two weeks ever. That time I had with my dad being his caregiver, even through the challenges, God bless our caregivers that do caregiving every single day. Even through those eight weeks, those challenges that we had, those are still some of my favorite memories with my dad. Those are memories that only he and I will get to, get to treasure as we keep going forward. But at the end of that, at the end of those six or seven months, the one thing I knew for sure is that I needed time for myself. And at that point, I decided to go to Costa Rica. So I booked a trip to Costa Rica. And I left on New Year's Eve 2022. And my plan was to stay for three weeks. And it was all about solitude, right? It was all about getting away so that I wasn't caregiving and I was only focused on my energy, giving back to myself, leaning into spending time in solitude, right? So as I arrive in Costa Rica, it's beautiful. Anyone ever been to Costa Rica before? A couple hands, wonderful. It's beautiful. I happen to be in a jungle area that was very hilly, very mountainous, and also only about 45 minutes from the ocean. So it was the, the best of both worlds. Tropical, very jungly, but then a short drive and you have the ocean nearby. So it was a perfect backdrop for some solitude. And what was really, really great about this, and when we talk about that spectrum that I mentioned, if we, if we think of isolation to solitude kind of on a spectrum, because I don't think they're the, the same. I think the energy is very, very different. When I leaned into solitude, I wasn't 100% alone. So as we start thinking about solitude and 100% solitude, I want you to be mindful, because when I talk about solitude, people are like, Jen, I don't think I could go be in Costa Rica by myself for three weeks. Like, that's just like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? And also, that's exactly the point, right? Like, because we don't have to do all the time. So there's a spectrum though. So wh where I went was actually on an organic farm. There were people around, but none of my people 
right? So there's a, a level of solitude where I pulled away from all of my people. I pulled away from all of the comforts of home, the comforts of my, you know, little perfectly planned house that I live in with my little altar and my candles that I love and the clothes that I care about so much and my perfect walk that I always walk into a place where it was all brand new and fresh. What does that automatically do? It gives us new perspective. Right? How many of you, without even realizing it, you showed up here at Lake Harriet Spiritual Community, your car, you got in your car, you knew you were going to come here, and you just landed, right? Because you've been here before, right? How many of you just, it, just the car just took you here? And then you get here and you're like, oh, I made it. Or we do that all the time, right? You have a place that you're going, you have your route, it's perfectly planned for you, you get there and then, oh, and we don't even think about that navigation. But anytime we take ourselves out of that, and for me it happened to be this time in Costa Rica, I take myself out of that and I remove myself and I land in Costa Rica for a time of solitude and it encourage us, encourages us to tap into the present. It encourages us to lean into the discomfort of not having everything planned out. Where I was, it was primarily filled with local Tikans and Tikas, uh, the native um, Costa Ricans, they refer to themselves, or we, they just refer to themselves as Tikans, Tikas. And they're all Spanish speaking, and some of them will speak a little bit of English, and there's a lot more um, expats that come in there, so certainly you wouldn't be alone. But where I was, it was primarily Spanish speaking local residents. The kindest, most delightful people I've ever met, and also I couldn't communicate with them at all. And so it was this perfectly imperfect balance of solitude while also knowing there are people there, right? We're not relying on each other for communication and conversation and connection, but I know that you're there and your essence here, I can feel that. And I think that's the same if we look around this room, right? Most of you, there's a couple of you that are sitting right next to you, actually, one set of you sitting right next to each other. And the rest of us are just kind of plop, you know, in our spot. So we're all together yet not. And you can feel the energy in the room, right? When Don asked us, can we please stand up and go meet a couple people? We feel that energy. You meet the people closest to you and you can feel that in the space, right? But now we're kind of in our own little spot. So it's not solitude. Right? But you're here for the most part by yourself. So there's that spectrum of what does this look like. And as you lean into solitude, I want you to consider how can I push the bar for myself just a little bit. So I have a good friend. I love her dearly. She is fantastic. She's one of my favorite people. And we see things very differently. And sometimes that's the way it's supposed to be, right? Because I get to challenge her, she gets to challenge me, and it's perfect. So this friend never goes on a walk without putting things in her ears. Never. She's always, um, uh, what is that called? Multitasking, right? Always doing something, listening to something, processing something, reading something, always doing something to keep moving down the path. And I challenged her once, well, how do you hear? She's like, well, Jen, I am hearing. I'm hearing, I'm hearing the podcast. I'm hearing this great new book. You have to check out this book. I'm like, no, how do you hear? How do you connect with, call it spirit, God, divine, higher self, universe, whatever word lands best for you, how do you hear if you're always plugged into something? And she paused for a moment and kind of stepped back and looked up. And then she looked at me and she's like, I don't think I do. You don't think you do or you don't think you're giving yourself the opportunity to hear because that's very different. And what I want to challenge you today is, are you giving yourselves the opportunity to hear? 
Because there are always messages, there's always something that we can take. But we have to give ourselves the space to do it. And that's that spectrum of solitude, right? So I'm not telling you every day, all day long, go and be in Costa Rica, go be by yourself in a little, bit of, a little bitty hut, and don't converse with anyone so that you can hear all the things. I think that might set us up for crazy town. Uh, may, maybe that's just me. Maybe that would set me up for crazy town. I'm not sure. But can you go somewhere in the middle? Can you lean in a little bit? Maybe take one walk a week without plugging in. There's a reason we talk a lot about meditation and sitting in solitude and, and, and doing various meditations, right? There are a lot of great meditations. When I teach meditation to people, sometimes they're like, Jen, I don't know how to meditate. Like, yeah, you do. Maybe you just haven't found the meditation that works for you. And by the way, meditation, just have a seat and be still. Maybe we could practice that for a moment. Let's have a seat and be still. We could lean into what Don said earlier. Just take a couple deep breaths and be in the space. That's a meditation. And that lends itself into a small window of being in solitude so that you can hear. So we can practice that, so we can lean into that space. Earlier this week, I was on a walk with my husband, so I don't always go on walks alone. When I do, I don't plug in. I either have my dog or my husband or both with. We were on a walk earlier this week, and I was talking to him about today. And I told him, you know, spending time in solitude, if that's our theme for the month, spending time in solitude to me feels very easy and natural. And he Sometimes he is my best teacher, and I know that's why we <laughs> paired up, right? Because I, just like my best friend, right? Just my, like my good friend. Um, when we got together, we are very different people. Um, I lean into a very spiritual world, into a practice that we are connected, that we are beautiful, divine human beings. Not that he doesn't, but he works at a news talk radio station. <laughs> so we land in very different arenas, and that's fine, because we complement each other really well. And so on this walk, I tell him that to me, it's very easy spending time in solitude. Like, I thrive on that. I want that. I seek that out. And I build it into my calendar every single day at some point. And he said, well, of course it's easy for you. How long have you been practicing it? I was like, oh, well, snap. <laughs> You're right. And as I leaned into that thought and that conversation, if you would have asked me 15 years ago to go spend some time, Jen, you get to spend time in solitude. If you would have told me that 15 years ago, I would have heard, Jen, you have to go be in isolation. Very different energies, right? Very different energies, but I would have taken it as a punishment. So for me to come in and just tell you why I want you to do this, feels like a 15 year practice that we haven't all been practicing it maybe for 15 years. Maybe you've been practicing it for 20 and you can get up here and talk about it. So I wanna chat with you a little bit about the benefits though so that you understand and can get a little bit attached to why this is so meaningful, spending time in solitude. And again, it can look any way you want it to look. It can be that spectrum, maybe there are days where the time that you have in solitude is a short walk in your neighborhood without plugging in. Maybe it's the five minutes in the morning that you can catch yourself before you get out of bed. This is one of my favorites, and this is actually how I started all of those years ago. So Wayne Dyer, I'm sure many are familiar with Wayne Dyer and his work, at least the name. Years ago, there was a practice that he talked about and it was actually from Rumi, a Sufi poet. And the quote from Rumi is, the morning breezes have secrets to tell. Don't go back to sleep. The morning breezes have secrets to tell. Don't go back to sleep. And when Wayne Dyer talked about this, he talked about this idea that when we wake up early, it's the divine, it's spirit, it's God, it's higher self. Again, whatever word you choose to use, tapping us and saying, I have something that you need to hear. 
So that became my first practice of solitude and going within, spending time in, in solitude, was when I wake up in the morning, instead of rushing up, getting out of bed quickly, or have you ever had this, where you wake up and you look at the clock and it's, let's say, 3.30 in the morning and you're like, are you kidding? Why am I awake now? And instead of like leaning into the angry of it, is it possible that there's a message for you to hear? Have any of you woken up and allowed yourself a little bit of space and you had a message drop in? Anyone? Yeah, handful of you, good, good. And there's some of the best, juiciest messages. So one of my favorite practices to do is the night before, and don't, maybe, maybe take this on, give it a chance, give it a try, see how it works for you. I won't tell you how it will or won't work because we're all unique, right? So one of my favorite practices that is the night before, if I'm doing something or I want um, an answer to something, I will go to bed and I will set the attention, intention, again, because remember, it's all about how we speak to ourselves. It's all about mindset. It's all about the words we choose to lean into. And I will set the intention that by morning, I'm going to wake and the answer will be there. And more often than not, I don't know that I can think of a time when it hasn't happened since I started it, that I'll wake up and usually it's far earlier than I intended to wake up, but I will wake up and I think in Kundalini Yoga, we talk about those early morning hours, two and a half hours before sunrise, which that time will adjust a little bit because our sunrise time always adjusts. So two and a half hours, if you're ever woken up about two and a half hours before sunrise, that's what we call in Kundalini Yoga, the Amrit Vela, Amrit Vela. And that time is when the, the veil is the thinnest, is what we call it. The veil is the thinnest, and we have the easiest, closest access to those lessons, those messages. And more often than not, when I've gone to bed the night before, I wake up two, two and a half hours before sunrise, and I put my hands on my chest, one on my belly, keep my eyes closed, I breathe, and the first thing I do is say thank you. Instead of cursing, instead of getting mad, instead of looking at the clock, because you know it's dark, you know it's early, I just say thank you. And it's quiet, you know, the stillness where the late night tra traffic is done and people haven't woken up yet. The animals aren't really moving, so it's just quiet. And I say thank you three times. And that was a practice Wayne Dyer taught me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I ask. Okay, morning breezes, you have secrets to tell, what are they? I'm ready. And the answer comes. And even when I haven't asked the question the night before, when I wake up in the morning, I do the same practice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I have, how long does that take? I mean, is it a minute or two? It's not long. And spending that time in solitude is the best gift I can give myself. It sets me up for the day. It sets me to hear. It sets me to be connected, to be grounded, to have gratitude. And who else does that impact then? My husband, my daughter, bless her heart. She just moved home a few months ago. We were empty nesters for like eight years. <laughs> And so I'm practicing because I want to be the best human for the humans in my lives. Even though I've been doing it for 15 years, I practice. So that's one of my favorite practices is thank you, thank you, thank you. If I know it to be true, Don, I think you leaned into that as well, which I love. If, if we assume the good, right? If I assume the possibility, if I know it to be true, that when I get in solitude, when I lean in and come into myself, if I know it to be true that when I do that, I'm gonna hear messages, do you think the messages are gonna come? Yeah, they always do. Because we're leaning into the truth of that being the possibility. So the practice, we'll go into the third piece, the practice and the benefit is us 
getting out of our human, what I refer to as meat suit way. Now that same friend I told you about earlier, I was, we were talking uh, years ago, and I said something along the lines of we are spiritual beings, you've heard maybe something like this, we are spiritual beings and we come here and we have this meat suit that we have to figure out. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, it's this. It's like our flesh and bones. It's like this meat suit, right? That we think we're supposed to do things a certain way. We think solitude or fill in the blank. Anything else is supposed to look a certain way. When really the truer, most full essence of who we are is spiritual. And how we lean into that human self of ours can vary greatly. And so I would love I would actually love to hear from you. When you think about spending time in solitude, what does that mean for you? How do you spend time in solitude? Because again, here's where I'm going with this. I'm happy to tell you how I do it. I gave you my morning one, right? I also spend time in solitude on the walks without plugging in. And I have one more I'm gonna tell you. Not quite solitude, this is a little bit lighter on the, on the spectrum but almost, give this one a shot if you're brave. Who in here is brave? Raise your hands. You're sitting by yourself, you're brave, right? You're here, you're here instead of out on a walk, like you're in this space, you're brave. Go to a restaurant without your phone, without a book, by yourself, and just be, and observe, and be in that space. Because again, you're in community, but you're detached. It's amazing. Every now and then I'll do that. About once a month, maybe I'll take myself out and not bring a book, not bring work to do, not bring my phone, not bring the thing to distract me because the automatic in us is the discomfort of judgment, busyness. What do I do? If I don't have my phone or a book, Jen, what do I do? Exactly, you be. You breathe. You notice. You notice others. You notice others doing this and you notice that you're not doing it. And as you practice, right, the nervous system, any, you don't have to admit this, but I bet there's at least most of us that the moment I say go to dinner, go to a restaurant, buy yourself, and you're not going at 2 p.m. You're going like lunchtime, dinner time, not like 10.30 or 2.30, right? You're not gonna like go on the edges here and like, you're going at one of the times where it's busy, right? The moment I invite you to do that, you're like, I don't know if I can, what do I do? But as we practice it, we become more comfortable with ourselves, our nervous system lands, we soften it. Anyone's nervous system on overdrive? Just because, just because of all of the things and life and the technology, Spending time in solitude, even in the pockets, like going to get a dinner by yourself, like sitting in the morning and just taking three breaths, that is retraining our nervous system. Now, Don, I saw you had the mic ready. So if we can, I would love to hear from you. How do you spend time in solitude? Can be big, can be small whatever that looks like for you. Anyone care to share their, how do I spend time in solitude? What does solitude look like for you? What does it mean? Don, there's a gal over here. Good morning. Good morning. What's I your name? It's Tammy. Tammy. I dance. You dance by yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love it. Every night. Music, no music. Music. Music, okay. And then I, um, two years ago, started hugging myself at night. Yes. So I love that. It's, it is. It's pretty cool. I love that. I'm going to practice that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for inspiring me with that. That's amazing. Excuse me. We're moving the mic, so if you're watching us online, tell us your name. Uh, my name is Ruben, and uh, I used to uh, do a number of things with uh, Native Americans. Okay. So one of the things that you were expected to do once a year is called Vision Quest. Yes. So you go to a place, and um, 
You stay there alone for whatever, three days, a week, whatever. And, uh, and the place isn't necessarily always safe, quote unquote. So I remember doing one at, I even forget the name of the hill, but it's a sacred hill in South Dakota. Mm. And uh, the Native Americans at the bottom said, oh, this is full of rattlesnakes. Are you sure you want to go up there? Well, I'm already here. So I did, and I slept there, and it was wonderful, by the way, with the stars. I mean, you could see the stars very easily because there's no uh, light pollution. Uh, and I didn't think about rattlesnakes. In the morning, there was a rattlesnake in front of me, and I thought, well, cute. And that's it, you know. So if you go with fear, you're going to attract it. If you go thinking, oh, you know, this is challenging, but wonderful at the same time, then you're going to see the wonderful, yeah. right? Which I did. I love you that. Know, wonderful starry night with no obstruction and only the trees and the wind. Yep. So okay. that's a perfect example. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah. I love that. It's beautiful. And I think it speaks a lot to how we're talking to ourselves, right? How are we speaking to ourselves? And even Tammy with your dancing, like being willing to just do that and, and, Dare I say, like, and I'm, this is me projecting, I would feel like a fool at first if I'm in my home dancing by myself. And you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to challenge myself to do it because who cares, right? And being in that solitude, it's going to shift the energy, right? And then being willing to go on a quest, like you were saying, Ruben, that certainly does it too. Anyone else care to share how they spend time in solitude? Hi there. What's your name? Dave. Dave. Nice to see you. I recently, uh started spinning 30 times in one direction and 30 times in the other direction. And I saw a YouTube video on it and I thought this is, there's no way this works, but it somehow puts you in the state of uh, presence because you're forced to have to watch something so you don't fall over. And when you get done, you're like, I feel like I just took a nap. That's, so I don't know, I thought I'd share it. That's amazing. And also I, I will give it a shot because I'm, I'm brave. I'll raise my hand as being brave. The first thing it made me think of, does anyone remember when you put the baseball bat down and you put your head on it and then you had to circle the baseball bat and then you get up and you're supposed to like try and swing, like, but not with a baseball bat. You're just spinning in a circle. You're watching. Okay. All right, we're, I, I mean, that is definitely solitude. That is not what I would, ex, would have expected, but you noticed how it feels. Amazing, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot, thank you. Anyone else care to share? How do you spend time in solitude? Do we all go on walks? Yes, please. Um, do we all go on walks with our ears plugged in or have you ventured out and walked without anything in your ears? Raise your hands if you are a ear plugger inner when you go on a walk? Yes and, no. yes and no, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. What about do you prefer nothing in when you go for a walk? Look at us, well done team. Okay, go for it. Um, What's my, your name? My name is Jen. Nice. And I, about a year and a half ago, learned transcendental meditation. So I do that every morning before I leave my bedroom, because if I leave my bedroom, it does not get done. Yeah, so. game on when, the bed, when we're out of the bedroom, yeah. right? Like, yeah. And then life can come at us. But if we've done that, you feel more equipped, right? Yeah, it, it really calms my brain so that when one of my five little humans comes up to me, I can be <laughs> calm and present for all of their stuff they have going on. I love that. So it has definitely helped me to be a better mom. Yeah, that's amazing. Better mom, better human. Yeah, all the things. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, hi, I'm Sharon. Um, definitely walking with no earbuds or yeah. anything. But um, also windshield time in my car. Mm. Uh, if, I, if I don't turn on the radio or music and I'm just in this, the quiet, yeah. um, I love that. And especially on a longer drive, say out in the country or whatever. That's really perfect. Good. Yep. I, I personally, share and resonate with that one quite a bit because I am a most of the time, not always, every now and then, we, have, we now have um, 
Sirius, is that what it's called in our car? We have Sirius, so there's no commercials? Thank goodness. Um, so every now and then, and I can pick the radio station so I know the songs, but most of the time I'm the same way. No music, no noise, and I just get to be and kind of land, and it's amazing what comes in. Again, it's setting that intention first, right? Like if you want, for me, the biggest benefit, one of the biggest benefits is the messages. I want to be, I want to know what I'm supposed to know. I want to be given the next message, the next thing I'm supposed to share. Even just, even just being here with you this, this morning, like, use me. I feel that I am meant to be used in that way to receive the messages. And in so doing, I look for all the ways that I can practice some solitude. So thank you. That is a great reminder and one of my favorites. Um, Don, I think we had a couple over here that like started to raise right in the middle. Thank you. Hi, Hi, I'm Kim. Kim, nice to see you. Thank you. You as well. I've actually taken two trips to Costa Rica. Yes. And the first trip was in uh, with a former partner. And during that trip, I felt so alone. It mm. was a very lonely relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my second trip to Costa Rica was with the intention of seeking solitude to have the beauty of this country in my heart in a, such a fulfilling way. And having those two experiences showed me how fulfilled and unlonely I really am with myself. And being able to see that clearly allowed me to take other trips alone. I take my dinner, myself to dinner, to the play. I hike the Grand Canyon alone. I go to the movies alone. Just knowing that um, I have that peace with me all the time because I know who I am, because I give myself that time for solitude. Now, I live alone, but I am far from lonely. Um, but I do still have to practice the intention and mindfulness to detach and come into peace. Sometimes I sit on my couch for literally hours doing nothing but yeah. sitting there and just receiving. And I, sometimes I feel like you do it for days. I'm like, why can't this be a job that somebody pays me <laughs> to sit here right. and just be? So, you know, it's a mindful practice. And the more you do it, the easier and more organic it comes. Like you don't want to sit in front of Netflix or even on your phone. You just, you just don't want it because it just clouds perception and makes things so much more challenging out in life. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank, Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. What a beautiful example. I especially love that because, and this is also a perfect segue. Did you, before he runs away, we'll come right back to you. So pause for a second. It's a perfect segue into where I, where I want to take this and how I want to wrap it up. So we're going to come back to that before we do. Please, sir. I was just going to share. Um, Will you tell us your name first? Oh, yeah. I'm Ryan. Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was just going to share, I've spent a lot of time in solitude in my journey, um, really the last 10 years off and on. And I would say for me, the number one practice is really getting into nature with, again, no phone, no, no connection to the inorganic world and just really immersing and letting everything unwind and it's led me down a path that has become nature's become a like a deep mirror mm. for my life and so the medicine needed for that time will also show up in the forms of what animals i'm crossing ways with or plants that are speaking to me to work with and you know things like that and that's another meditation too for you know that I, I i make a lot of medicine and so for me it's kind of become so second nature that it really is like a meditation you know as long as i treat it that way right it's right become work you know right that's a great <laughs> distinction yeah yeah that's a great dis Anyways. distinction beautiful share thank you i i love that i think i mean first and foremost we are nature Right? So great reminder. First and foremost, we are nature. 
We came from nature. We will return to nature, right? And remembering that, that we have more in common with nature than we don't, is really, really powerful. And when we allow ourselves, as, as you shared, um, Ryan, to get out there and to be with it and to let it speak to us and connect with us. Um, quick story, when we were in, travel is one of my favorite things in the world, and seeing, seeing other people, other cultures, uh, and also nature and going to other places that don't look necessarily like Minnesota. And we were in Austria a number of years ago now and from Austria we took a trip into Prague and we went to uh, a Prague castle and the back side of the castle, there are castles everywhere over there, so it was one of the many castles that we went in, but they, all of the castles all had a garden out back. And so we would find, walk through the castle, yay, let's look at the castle, that's all fine and good. And it's beautiful, but I'm always like, when do we get to go to the garden? So we walked out to the garden, and lending itself, Ryan, to what you were saying, as we walked out, there was this tree, and I, to this group and you know, to whoever ends up watching, I feel comfortable enough telling you that that tree told me it needed me and I needed that tree. And I had never up to that point just walked like goodbye humans that I'm here with. You have no idea where I'm going or what I'm doing. But I walked over to that tree and I threw my arms around it and held it. And it was the most softening peaceful moment I'd had in a very, very long time. And as I let go, my husband has a picture of me standing. As I let go, I just sat there, just, just the tree and I, just like communing. And there's a photo. And what's really great about the photo is that it has, um, there's kind of a, you can see the aura or the light coming between the tree and I. It's really magical. So there is something really special about nature. And remember, it's in whatever capacity we can, right? Sometimes, maybe it's going to Austria, to the garden, maybe it's going to Costa Rica, and other times, maybe it's in your own backyard. Maybe it's remembering that you can get out of your apartment and walk down the street and there's that little pocket of nature right there, right there that's perfect too. Now coming back quickly to what you were sharing earlier and how I want to end this and land on this is, this is all about comfort with ourselves. Getting comfortable with spending time in solitude is falling back in love with ourselves. Somewhere, somehow along the way, we have fallen, fallen out of love with ourselves. We have allowed society teachers, pre preachers, friends, family, fill in the blank to tell us what it's supposed to be like. And we're remembering now, this is a great space to have these conversations because we are in a remembering space. We're remembering what it's like to love ourselves. And that's what this is all about to me. Spending time in solitude gives you back to you. It gives you the chance to know yourself. It gives you the chance to embrace yourself. It gives you a chance to exhale and come home. And that is my prayer for you today, is that you take one little nugget of how can I be in solitude because what it's gonna gift you will last longer than the time it takes you to do it. Thank you. Jen, thank you so much. That was uh, really great, and it's such a reminder. I don't know about any of you, but it's easy to get kind of trapped in our own minds and our own doing this, and such a reminder that it's a practice. You know, it's, it's, it's a skill that can be developed, and uh, the rewards of that are really something. And the last thing you said was exhale and connect. What were your last words about? Do you recall that? Uh, that just that's out there <laughs> yeah that's just really something exhale and then breathe in you know we are all unique spiritual beings we are all consciousness and we're all interconnected and uh, thank you for the reminder uh, that we can connect into that beautiful space so it's time now for uh, uh, our giving uh, we are a volunteer organization and our doors and lights are uh, open and kept on through your generous gifts. 
So we welcome your giving today. Um, also, you can give online at Lake Harriet Spiritual Community.org. And there is a Venmo QR code in the basket if uh, you'd like to give that way. So thank you. Gary, music is another way for us to connect into that solitude and that oneness. Would you please raise your hands and uh, say with me, God's perfect love blesses and multiplies all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. Aho, and thank you. Well, now it's time for our closing circle. Kim, maybe if uh, on your row we would connect into a circle and uh, hold hands, and Jen is going to take us out into the week. It's been great to have you here today, and uh, there's so many neat events to connect and uh, up your vibe this week. We hope to see you again. Okay, this is perfect. All right, let's all take a nice deep inhale together and a full exhale. Okay, that was so good. Let's do one more. Nice deep inhale and a full exhale. And then take a moment and look around at these beautiful humans in this space with us. Maybe we came here alone, but we're part of something bigger. Maybe we came here alone, but we don't need to be lonely. And then, as we lean into the theme of spending time in solitude, I want you to close your eyes for a moment, and I want you to lean into yourself. Lean into a moment of self-love. The solitude gets to be a gift. It gets to be a reminder that you're already worthy. You already have everything you need. You're already enough, as is. And for that, we say, Yahoo! Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jen. Thank you.